In 2010, several oarfish were sighted in Japan. The Japanese called these giants the Ryugu no Tsukai, or messengers from the sea god's palace. And according to Japanese legend, they are omens of natural catastrophes. And indeed, a couple of months after the sightings, in 2011, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in the country hit Japan. Were these two occurrences a coincidence? Or is there truth behind the legend? I love mythology. I used to dream that Atlantis was real and that I would be the one to discover it and live in it forever. But I also like to understand what is behind the myths. Sometimes they are just misinterpretations of reality. Or they are based on an imaginary story someone once told at dinner time or in a book. But sometimes myths can also be sorta kinda true. Today we will investigate whether oarfish being bringers of bad luck is one of those cases. But first, to introduce you to the oarfish, Welcome Thomas from Wild World. Many creatures from the deep sea seem to spark a certain mythos and legend around them. And the slender and incredibly long oarfish has a striking resemblance to descriptions of sea serpents. They were first described in 1772 by Peter Ascanius, a Norwegian Danish biologist and geologist, and a student of Carl Linnaeus. However, even though they were first described over 250 years ago, we still don't know a whole lot about these creatures, and they are still wrapped in many myths and legends. But what do we know? Well, when it comes to the oarfish, there are actually three known species, with the giant oarfish being the longest known bony fish in the world, growing up to 11 meters or 36 feet in length. Again, sea serpent. With a creature capable of being able to grow so large, you'd think we'd be able to find them easy enough. But even though they do have a worldwide range, they like to swim deep and are thought to inhabit the epipelagic to mesopelagic zone from 250 meters all the way down to 1000 meters or 660 to 3300 feet. Now, while pictures of oarfish certainly evoke the image of a sea serpent, these fish aren't at all monsters. It's very unlikely they pose any threat to humans, not only because they are rare and live so deep, but also because from specimens we have found, we can see their diet consists of pretty small creatures. They primarily seem to feed on zooplankton and selectively strain tiny krill, shrimp, and other crustaceans from the water. And on occasion, they snack on small fish, jellyfish, and squid. Like I said, we rarely see oarfish swimming close to the surface. And when we do, they are usually sick or dying, or they're not swimming at all because they're dead. A few people have seen them in seemingly good health. And this brings us to one of the more interesting facts about the oarfish. They've been seen swimming vertically, rhythmically undulating the dorsal fin while keeping the body itself straight, which may be how they hunt, but also they've been seen swimming laterally, using lateral undulations of the entire body. There are still many things about the oarfish we don't know, like how many of them are even out there. We also don't really know much about their breeding habits. They are still a mysterious fish, and perhaps that is why there are so many legends about them. They have been linked to old folk tales about giant snakes in the ocean. The ancient Norwegians called them the king of the herrings, and it was believed by some that if you injured an oarfish, the yield from the herring fishing would be pretty poor. And then there is another legend, the one we are here today to discuss. There is a Japanese legend that says the oarfish is a messenger from the sea that warns of an impending earthquake and tsunami. And the legend has gained some traction as sightings of this rare fish seem to spike before an earthquake and tsunami. So is there some truth to this legend? If you are interested in learning about another deep sea giant, go over to Wild World's channel and check out a video we worked on together about the giant squid. I will leave a link down below. Say hi to him for me and subscribe. This idea that oarfish are bringers of bad news is not something of the past. 
And it is a legend that is still very much alive today. And animal sensing natural occurrences before they happen is not an outrageous concept. Animals displaying abnormal behavior just before earthquakes has been reported several times throughout the decades, or even centuries. And unfortunately, more recently before really devastating events. In 2004, what is considered until today the deadliest tsunami ever recorded hit several countries in Southeast Asia. It was a horrible event that affected millions of people. Afterwards, some recalled animals behaving oddly, before the catastrophe. They remembered domestic animals being more anxious, and animals at the zoo being more fearful than usual. And, this is going to be important later, some people recalled seeing elephants moving to higher ground. There are some explanations as to why some animals might be able to detect earthquakes before we can, and it stems from the fact that they might be able to detect something called earthquake precursor signals. These are changes in the environment that happen before the main earthquake event. For example, elephants, which will still be important later, can detect a much wider range of infrasound than we can. In fact, they use infrasound for long-range communication, since it is a type of sound that can travel long distances. So some researchers have suggested that elephants might be able to hear infrasounds produced by an earthquake far away or a tsunami approaching. They also have really large and sensitive feet with a network of sensory receptors. So some also propose that they might also be able to detect ground vibrations associated with seismic activity through their feet. And maybe other animals might be able to do so as well, like mice and insects. Others might be able to detect changes in electromagnetic fields caused by earthquakes, especially animals with strong magnetoreception abilities, like migratory animals. And here's the plot twist. The reality is, most reports on animals sensing natural catastrophes, including earthquakes, are just that, reports. This ability, or this potential ability they have to detect these earthquake precursor signals has not yet been scientifically proven. You remember those elephants I told you before were important? While some people reported elephants moving to higher ground, two other Asian elephants that were being tracked at that time in Sri Lanka, close to where the tsunami hit, didn't display any strange behavior. So was their earthquake detecting superpower just not as strong as with the other elephants? That could be, but it also could not be. The reported change in elephant behavior before the tsunami was based on interviews and reports given by people. And this is a problem and one of the main challenges in studying these kind of things. Most of these reports are done in retrospect. And this is a problem because we don't have controlled conditions to compare those reports to. And observations done retrospectively might lead to us creating causational relationships between things that are actually not related at all. It's really difficult to prove either way. It might be that they, in fact, did detect the earthquake, but scientifically, there's still not enough data to back that up. What about the oarfish? Because that's why we are all here assembled today. The number of times oarfish appeared before an earthquake happened does make us wonder. More recently, in 2017, at least a dozen oarfish was spotted days prior to an earthquake in the southern Philippines. And three washed ashore before the 2019 Yamagata earthquake in Japan. These recent events strengthen the view that oarfish might actually be some sort of doomsday fish. But what does the science say about that? Unfortunately, these fish's abilities and behaviors are relatively unknown. So let's take a look at what we do know. In Japanese folklore, oarfish are not the only species seen as omens of bad things. There are several deep sea fish whose appearance at the surface is seen as an earthquake warning. In this one study, the authors looked at the correlation between recorded deep-sea fish appearances around Japan and the occurrence of earthquakes within a 100-kilometer radius until after 30 days of those appearances. They looked at these eight species, which included the giant oarfish, and at sightings dating between 1928 and 2011. And they found no correlation 
between the appearance of these species at the surface and earthquakes occurring within the next 30 days. These 30 days are important. Many sightings that were supposedly warning people of an upcoming earthquake happened months before the actual earthquake. That is just too long of an interval. And so it is unlikely that these sightings were at all related to the earthquakes. I did find this one poster that reported that recent oarfish sightings mainly occur in the region of tectonic plate boundaries. These are also highly active seismic regions. It's not really clear why they seem to appear more at the surface in these regions in comparison to others, but one thing that the authors do mention is that this might be because of biases in reporting. Maybe because of the pre-existing bias towards thinking that there is a relationship between oarfish appearing at the surface and earthquakes, when they appear anywhere else, they might be overlooked or not reported at all. Of course, we cannot disregard the possibility that there might be something in these areas that influence the fish somehow, resulting in them being more likely to surface. This disproportional number of sightings in these regions, regions which are also rich in earthquakes, could be why the legend started. Because as of now, there does seem to be a general agreement amongst researchers that oarfish appearances at the surface and earthquakes are unrelated, and that they might end up appearing at the surface because of poor health, specific upward currents, a combination of both, or because of something we have yet to discover. My conclusion from all of this is that oarfish are awesome and magnificent and great, and that if you ever encounter one, you do not need to worry about an impending doom. If you like Orfish, I can totally recommend you this book, written by me. It's just been launched in time for Christmas, so if you have any kids in your family or adults who like kids stories or to learn a little bit more about deep sea creatures, consider buying Orly the Grumpy Orfish. It's about an Orfish who is grumpy. But will he stay grumpy? You can buy it online, or if you want to support your local bookstore, you can order it through your local bookstore. Thank you so much, Thomas from Wild World, for collaborating with me in this video. Go check out the video we did in his channel about the giant squid. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much to all my Patreons over on Patreon for supporting what I do. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.